Right. So let's make a start without further ado. Uh, near to you know, we have someone new in the room. So the way it works is people present papers and science they got excited about last week, uh, briefly presented, and then we have a chat about it to the best of our knowledge, and there is no wrong questions. Um, because we're running a little bit late today, let's just make a start. And Leah, do you want to kick us off? So actually, uh, this is a preprint um, that I was interested in since I'm uh, I'm um, uh, studying the uh, nonlinearity models to represent the imaging data. Uh, this is a paper. It's uh, by Dabi et al. And so it's a, a preprint. Uh, it both combine uh, deep learning approach and uh, uh, nonlinearity uh, modeling, in particular using the UPAP, uh, the Uniform Manifold Approximation Projection uh, method, uh, compared to the principal component method. So we have comparing these two uh, approaches, uh, both uh, evaluated on the uh, um, uh, on the structure of uh, a deep learning uh, uh, approach. Uh, so uh, we, um, this is the general model. So uh, we have uh, the data uh, as input. Then we have an outer encoder uh, that is fully data driven. So uh, a latent space representation uh, in uh, this uh, final layer of the encoding. Uh, and in this latent space, we uh, they um, evaluated the uh, UMAP model and also the PCA. So in uh, these nodes in the layer, in this uh, final layer, and then uh, they also evaluated the um, clinical uh, relevance by correlating the, uh, the uh, results with clinical tests. I haven't said that uh, um, here uh, we, um, the authors analyzed the uh, task SNRI uh, data, in particular, they used the seven task and 86, 86 contrast from the un, uh, uh, Human Connection Project. And then they also generalized the same model uh, using the data from the uh, UK Biobank. Uh, where uh, there was available one task and evaluated five contrasts. And um, yeah, this is uh, another representation of the uh, structure. So uh, you have all uh, the encoding layers. And then it's also possible, uh, starting from these uh, uh, final fully connected layers, to also uh, decoding back to the uh, narrow imaging space. Uh, the uh, results of this analysis. And um, in particular, they, um, they found uh, a better, a better uh, clustering. Uh, here we can see here in the representation using the um, uh, UMAP uh, modeling on the um, encoding layer. Here you can see uh, in different colors the uh, seven different tasks from the Human Connection Project. Uh, they have, uh, um, and here I think there are also the different contrast uh, cluster. Uh, so language, story, math, social uh, theory of mind. And uh, maybe then I can go back on the data set, maybe it's, uh, um, I have an example a little bit here in the article. So the uh, seven different tasks were uh, emotion uh, processing, gambling, language, relational processing, social cognition, motor, and working memory. And uh, they have 568 uh, participants. And uh, then they also have different um, several tests clinical behavioral cognitive uh, task results uh, to evaluate the goodness of this uh, model representation so the, rep the uh, correspondence with the results in the clustering in this uh, latent space obtained by the deep learning and then in the UK Barrow Bank there is this huge uh, data set of uh, 20,781 participants 
and they had the emotional task. Uh, um, that, that, that was also in the um, uh, UCP uh, data set, but um, a little bit modified, but it's uh, a huge data set. And uh, here how they um, proposed the, so the UMAP uh, presentation of the Latin space and uh, uh, also the uh, principal component one. Going back uh, to the results, I saw here in the discussion they say that uh, um, principal component analysis is not uh, seems not to be able to uh, represent uh, nonlinear uh, correlations, uh, in particular with the uh, cognitive scores, and uh, instead uh, the UMAP seems to be able to uh, cluster these uh, um, these uh, contrasts. Here you can. Uh, um, in this uh, example, in this plot, and here also how then they project 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 that. So um, after the encoding, they then uh, use the, the net to going back to the uh, structural um, um, imaging space, and uh, here they obtain from the different uh, seven tasks. Uh, a meaningful representation of an agreement with uh, previous uh, artic articles. Here, in particular, is um, interesting this representation of the um, correlations, the R correlations, using the autoencoding uh, method, that is the, the one with the UMAP and the PCA. And here you can see in uh, blue and higher um, correlations with the different. Uh, uh, tasks uh, using this uh, uh, the nonlinear model. Uh, this is why they say in the hard in the title the nonlinearity matter, uh, since they uh, saw in all the different uh, uh, tasks uh, this uh, better um, correspondence with the uh, autoencoding uh, uh, approach. And uh, here also had a uh, representation of um, correlations using the different contrasts and again the, the uh, correspondence, be, uh, the, um, the comparison between the autoencoding approach and PCA. So yes, then uh, um, I think this is the new way of analyzing data and uh, um, the cloud and the result seems uh, promising. It seems this a good uh, uh, correspondence with uh, uh, what we expect in terms of uh, um, activations, uh, uh, modeling, and also, uh, most importantly, uh, from the agreement with the other cognitive tests that can really um, close the gap between uh, the neuro imaging results and the clinical, these are LC subjects, but in a clinical uh, um, translation, maybe with the clinical scores uh, um, of some um, specific uh, pathologies, I can say. So I don't know if you have any questions, this is what I get from uh, the article. Thank you, Leah, that's great. Any questions? Uh, yes, I have one. Mm -hmm. uh, could you just tell me what they put inside the um, the autoencoder and the UMAP? It's uh, you say that it's uh, the um, the contrast. What do you mean exactly? It's like the statistical image from uh, the uh, using the 4D and the uh, theoretical uh, activation uh, hemodynamic response. Uh, so. Mm, in the uh, UMAP, uh, they use these, uh, I'm going to go in the methods, um, Latin space, uh, so they, I just select two components at the island side of the UMAP, and uh, uh, here they say that uh, the number of uh, um, latent uh, variates denotes in the fully connected layer, so this is the uh, input of the um, let's say UMAP and PCA modeling. And uh, uh, then, yes, also for me, it wasn't really clear uh, how they evaluated the different contrasts. Uh, maybe I have to read this um, in deep, but I think that then, uh, since they have like uh, these uh, seven uh, tasks, 
uh, then they um, the contrast um, are the uh, little bit like a comparison between the different contrasts that they have specific to different tasks. For example, here in this uh, um, in the plot, sorry, here you see you see this uh, comparison: language, story, math, social, tom, relational, uh, braille, and um, so uh -huh. on. And so, um, so I think the contrast is um, in this um, in this way. Indeed, uh, in the um, uh, UK Biobank, they just have one um, task and seven um, contrasts, maybe related to the um, task presentation. Okay. So, because I'm not super familiar with uh, task ephemera, I know I, I know the basic stuff. So I admit I don't exactly know what specific um uh term refers to uh, what specific data i know that uh, i so i think that con by contrast they mean the statistical image of the activation in the, the task activation uh, uh protocol so mm -hmm. uh i think they they enter like 3d 3d statistical maps of for each subject of the activations uh of the uh the fmri mm -hmm. the, and so what they are doing actually is it's interesting, but if mm -hmm. I correctly, it's just uh, an, an analysis of the um, uh, of the, the, the where the statistical uh, image is uh, activated uh, and how to um, to. Uh, separate different uh, statistical maps uh, only based on their uh, well, uh, on, uh, where their activations are is that right it's, yes uh, i think it, yes i think it's um as you were saying yeah because they really trying to um like going beyond uh, uh, the simplest representation that you can have of the data so using like uh, advanced modeling and also all the different contrasts so really like uh, trying to squeeze all the information from uh, uh, these uh, data set. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, having like you have one, uh, even one algorithm that can process everything and tells you it's that, it's this, and stuff like that, I guess. Uh, yes. Also, they have also supplementary data uh, where um, they try to explain a little bit uh, this. But yes, also for me, it wasn't really. Uh, I, did, I, I don't have all the steps in mind, but I think that this is the general idea. They also did before uh, at the beginning a down sampling of the data uh, from two millimeters to uh, three millimeters of voxel resolution, uh, because uh, you know, like they have this introduction when they say that of course deep learning have these uh, uh, dimensionality course, so now it's possible because we will have a lot of, a lot of data, but. Uh, uh, they use GPU in the uh, preprocessing to speed up the analysis. So um, yeah, this uh, under these uh, results, this seems like uh, easy in terms of contrast and everything. And there is like uh, a lot of processing, yes, going on uh, being underneath. And uh, I think all the contrast, as you were saying, so all the possible combination that you can uh, have from uh, these um, activation data sets. So yeah, okay. So if I can try to uh, summarize their method, they do a dimensional reduction with an autoencoder, mm -hmm. uh, and then they do the U map on the latent space, so yes. dimensionally reduced uh, data uh, to uh, to separate the difference uh, and to um, to cluster the different uh, data sets. Is that the, the main idea? Right. Yes, yes, this is the main idea. All right, it's fairly, uh, it's also fairly typical of uh, what you can do with, uh, uh, with this kind of uh, technique. It's so uh, uh, it's nice. Mm, yeah, so I find it really interesting. Also, it's, yeah, it's, an, it's a preprint, but yeah, really um, nice. Thank you. Lovely. Any other questions? No.
Um, I got a couple for you, Leah. So um, you scrolled through it quickly, but I thought I saw that they used about 480 data points from the HCP for their modeling. Is that right? Wait, I don't remember the exact number. Du, du, du. So here, yeah, from 168 um, participants. Is it is that a matter of bigger is better in that case? That the more subjects you have, the better you define your space. Um, yes. So also there was some um, split the data in, into different uh, uh, subsets to uh, use a. Uh, cross validation, so uh, you need like uh, usually like uh, more subjects than you split the data set, the training and validation set, uh, and so yeah, uh, the uh, more the better. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the link between the HCP and the UK Biobank that was basically a replication, or did they actually combine it in a way? No, it was a replication. So they um, use, uh, they say it's like a generalization. So they use the same approach in a different data set mm -hmm. and uh, um, like uh, compare the results. But also in this uh, UK Biobank, it's a, it's a different uh, data set because they have more participants but less information in terms of uh, um, for like a cognitive behavior and clinical scores and uh, uh, they just have one task. You can't have it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just that. laughs> yes, yes, but the number is huge. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, okay. Um, and the final question I have for you is about the clustering. Mm -hmm. So did they apply an additional clustering after they ran the UMAP? And then related to that, you showed the nice image where they back projected it onto the brains using mm -hmm. k-means clustering, but for k-means clustering, you need to define the number of your clusters. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if the number of the clusters is equal to the cognitive domains and what the advantages mm -hmm. of having mm -hmm. a data-driven approach and then bringing it back to a top-down clustering. So yeah, they use the kappa mean clustering. I was uh, trying, uh, because I haven't seen, yes, I know that in the kappa means you have to define the as a prior knowledge of the model, the uh, number of clusters, but here in the test, uh, in the in the manus text uh, manuscript, uh, I haven't really because they say like the kappa means I, I don't know maybe maybe it's in the supplementary somewhere uh, with the number of cluster that they used uh, here. I haven't uh, uh, maybe it's somewhere, but uh, I missed it. But uh, um. I don't know uh, exactly. which was the prior knowledge, so the number of clusters did they define. I, am, I haven't seen that. Don't worry, I'll, I'll check the supplementary material later. No, so here, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe because maybe they defer to another article that I haven't read. Uh, yes, because like also mm, through the article, they also referred to prior uh, from like to other articles uh, from this analysis. So I haven't like uh, read it all, but yeah, uh, there are the information. For example, here they are they are referring to uh, Bark 2013, and uh, and then the um, I guess the uh, back projection in the uh, structural space. Let's see. Um, they could be useful for a, a more um, a more clinical interpretation where they are not just the numbers in the Latin space, but I guess that back projection back 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 projecting, uh, you have these uh, um, uh, kind of uh, visual uh, visual in uh, output of the analysis, and you say, okay, this is uh, maybe meaningful, this is uh, uh, clear and neat. Um, so, for example, they say about language that they found a left uh, lateralization of the activation has been affected. Um, so, yeah, I guess. Uh, but the correlations were uh, on uh, the in uh, the Latin space uh, output. And that figure would really help to have left and right indicators. 
Yeah, I I thought that. Yeah, I guess it's that. I guess I guess. <clears throat> well, it's a I quick break. Yeah, still time to just take a left in there somewhere. <laughs> Right, thank you very much. Are there any other questions that came up in the meantime? No? Great. Let's move on to the next paper then. Valentina, if you want to share your link in the chat so everyone can follow, and then share your screen with us, please. Okay. This is a very recent paper out in uh, Neuropsychologia. Um, and it's um, about uh, cortical restatement in uh, developmental amnesia. Uh, personally, I didn't know about this syndrome. So developmental amnesia, um, it's a condition um, affecting uh, from childhood um, patients who um, are not able to uh, retrieve uh, episodic memory, so memory, autobiographical memory from their past. Um, however, um, these patients can be um, can uh, develop a semantic memory. Uh, so um, it's um, uh, the semantic memory and episodic memory is uh, are um, affected mm -hmm. in, in different. Tina, sorry to interrupt you. Can you zoom into the paper so we can see it? Yeah, better? sure. It's better. It's better. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so these patients show um, a shrinkage of the hippocampus since childhood. Um, and uh, as I was saying, they uh, are not able to uh, retrieve episodic memory. Um, so uh, the uh, explanation uh, of why uh, the hippocampus is shrinked, but they uh, are able to spread a semantic memory, uh, one of the explanation is that maybe um, different part of the uh, hippocampal area or uh, other um, cortical structures are recruited to compensate the, the damage. Um, in fact, uh, as we know, the hippocampus have uh, many uh, memory involved uh, functions uh, from encoding, uh, um, it can uh, bind perceptual element uh, to an, a, a unique episodic representation, or it can separate, can store independently many um, pattern of representation. Uh, then um, the long-term storage uh, and uh, uh, more retrieval um, associated functions such as uh, part and completion where um, only one uh, word such as they make the example the word concert can trigger the, um, the entire memory of the concert and uh, and the recollection state uh, whereby um, one can uh, perform a mental time travel through the memories um, so uh, the um, the goal of the of the study is to uh, find whether patients with developmental um, amnesia um, can uh, actually um, show uh, some sort of uh, level of um, episodic memory um, via the investigation of the cortical restatement, um, which is a, um, a phenomenon. Um, uh, that um, show that um, neural activity uh, can be elicited uh, during the encoding um, and um, stored uh, and showed by the, the cortex during the, the retrieval of the memory. Um, and this is performed via uh, functional MRI. Um, I'm going, I'm jumping to the methods, but the study has 19 healthy participants and uh, five um, developmental amnesia um, patients. Um, these uh, are relatively young patients, as you can see by the table that I'm going to show you in a minute. OK. So these are the, the patients. They are relatively young. And this is the average age of the control group. All the patients went through um, an uh, uh, assessment for their memory abilities. And as you can see, uh, 
patients are uh, have a relatively spared working memory abilities, uh, but have they have an impaired um, retrieval. Uh, memory abilities, uh, especially in the auditory modality. Um, so the study, the experimental study, um, is made up by two, two phases. The study phase is only behavioral and uh, it's done outside the, um, the, the scan. Um, participants are presented with three uh, squares uh, where they um, were um, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, a word appears in one of the three squares um, randomly. And uh, uh, after um, a scene um, below the, the word appears and uh, the, participa the participants are asked to um, imagine the, um, uh, the content of the word playing in the, um, in the scene. The scene can be rural or um, uh, urban or scattered, so a scattered image. Uh, and then participants are asked to rate the pleasantness of the, of the scene they are watching and um, via uh, number rating. So one unpleasant, two somewhat pleasant, and three very pleasant. Um, then uh, in the Task in the um, test phase, uh, which is performed in the fMRI, participants are, are asked to um, recollect, to um, retrieve where, whether they uh, saw the um, the word that appears in the in the center of the of the screen, and if they say yes. Um, a um, follow-up question is presented and uh, asking whether uh, the word was presented on a urban background or a rural background um, and the participant asked to reply yes, no, or not sure. Uh, and uh, this, this is uh, done for both um, in, in for both the scene and also for the location of the image where so where the image appeared, um, meaning the left um, square, central square, or right square. Um, moreover, the authors um, so they had specific uh, hypotheses on the um, structure to investigate in the functional MRI studies, which are uh, two structure um, connected, linked to uh, scene retrieval, um, such as the uh, parahippocampal uh, cortex and um, sorry, I, I go up. It will pop up in the in the results. Um, so they had uh, two specific ROIs, but they also wanted to explore other areas that are not uh, classically associated with seen um, retrieval. And so they performed a functional uh, localizer where they showed to the participants um, seen uh, either uh, normal scene or scrambled. Um, and participants were instructed to um, press um, a, a key, uh, whether they saw uh, a smiley face in between the scene presentation. Um, the um, behavioral results show that um, uh, patients um, uh, were uh, significantly uh, less able to distinguish um, the uh, actually presented word they, they called old word from a new uh, random word that uh, they have been presented with. Um, so they are more impaired than the, than, uh, the controls. And this is true uh, for both the background task and the location task. So both for um, the uh, word uh, and background matching and the position of word appearance and uh, word matching. Um, while um, the ROI um, analysis showed that uh, for the parahippocampal cortex, um, there is a, um, a, a cortical um, uh, reinstatement um, effect. So um, parahippocampal cortex seems to be more um, engaged uh, while retrieving the um, word and scene um, coupling. Um, 
for um, in particularly for um, the, um, the the patients than the control. While the retrospinal clock cortex, which was the the um, structure that I wasn't remember. Um, the retrospinal cortex doesn't show this uh, patient control difference. Um, well, for the whole brain analysis, the uh, authors per, uh, performed the um, correlation between um, an accuracy score, which is the uh, proportion of um, uh, corrected um, uh, background scene, a uh, background word uh, matching um, over uh, the uh, overall uh, remembered word and uh, the restatement, uh, the cortex restatement effect. And they, uh, they did perform this only uh, for the control group and they see uh, a positive correlation uh, while they plotted um, the, the patients only for um, exploratory issues. Um, and so um, uh, for the um, uh, whole brain analysis, they seen that um, the uh, patients have actually a restatement effect um, that uh, expand to uh, the occipital cortex uh, uh, when compared to, uh, to the controls. The patients are here in, um, in pink, while the controls are here in uh, light blue. And, and then they uh, further uh, explore this uh, uh, by plotting um, the uh, regions where uh, the resettlement occurs for the patients versus the regions where the resettlement occurs for the controls, um, like plotting out that uh, the different uh, cortices activated in the two groups. Um, so uh, take home message uh, is that um, pa uh, patients with uh, developmental um, uh, amnesia are actually able to um, uh, store and retrieve the, uh, the memory, uh, the episodic memory, uh, but they are not aware of uh, the um, uh, the the uh, the recollection, so they cannot uh, describe the recollection, and um, uh, this uh, could be due uh, to. Uh, so there are two possibilities. One is that um, they um, there are not um, enough information, uh, and so um, they cannot uh, put the, all the information together and. Um, retrieve uh, in, a, in a conscious way the memory. Um, uh, and also um, there, there is the um, occipital cortex uh, uh, activation, which may imply that uh, this patient recruit uh, other um, like supplementary uh, cortices to um, compensate to, to their deficits. Thank you, Valentina. Very interesting. Um, before I open up to questions, one comment and one question from me. Um, the comment being that I shared a link with you because on the channel we actually have an entire talk on growing up without episodic memory uh, and developmental amnesia. So I shared the link over on YouTube and on Zoom here and I will put it later in the video description as well. Thank you. Um, then the question I had for you is if you can for the non-cognitive scientists among us, if you could very briefly summarize semantic and episodic memory and what, what the difference is. Semantic memory is the uh, meaning of, of the word, like the, um, inform the um, information on, on the meaning of the word. For instance, um, taking their, their example, if I, um, think of the word uh, concert, I know that in concert, I will listen to music. Um, episodic memory um, instead refers to um, memories that are um, related to our experiences. Um, and that has to be uh, actively um, um, verbalized and uh, recollected. So basically one is knowing what a concert is and entails and one is remembering being at the last concert. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Lovely. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Mm, I have maybe one. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, so, I don't know, but I did I understand correctly? So, there were three types of background that they were showing scrambled, urban, and uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there were no trials when they were just presenting the scenes, right? So they are always were coupled with the words. Um, the only trials where they are only presenting the scenes is um, it, those are the um, the functional exploration trials where they. Ah, so they did it. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there is no uh, behavioral uh, task yeah, yeah, yeah. to mm -hmm. the only the scene. If I remember well. <laughs> no, because I, I thought that they don't have this uh, back, uh, just background uh, uh, presentation. Only the only with the background, no. But in fMRI they did it, right? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay. To, to explore uh, yes, yes. which other areas or which other structures um, yeah. mm -hmm. are activated by the, um, only the, the, the scene. So. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. was um, yeah. I was just yeah, uh, thinking about the um, comparison between the hippocampal results uh, and the whole brain. Uh, so where we have like more activation on the occipital cortex. So it's uh, just uh, a compensation, a compensation activations. Uh, um, or what what can be the explanation? Yeah. Uh, so they um, um, they uh, interpret interpreted as a compensation. However, um, the results doesn't survive um, family-wise error correction. Mm -hmm. So they say uh, we should take it like carefully, the, the statement, like the interpretation. You said like in, in the hippocampal, uh, you can see these different uh, uh, clusters or maybe different areas that are uh, more involved in this deficit or um no they um, uh, they comment on the um, difference between uh parepocampal and um i never remember that um parepocampal and i never retro, retro, retro spinal cortex <laughs> <laughs> um which they found also in the in the whole brain uh, uh analysis um but yes, uh, the new structure is the occipital uh, new structure. I mean, the structure they found out via the whole brain analysis, the occipital cortex. Um, these are um, so this class, these different colors refers to um, the functional localizer um, areas that are activated. You see. Uh, independently, mm -hmm. independently from uh, uh, the tasks so or background or location or the, the group. And um, then you have the red is uh, scene memory. Uh, if I remember well, is the um, scene percept, the functional localizer areas related to um, the coupling between the background and um, the the word, uh, and this is specifically um, for the patients, the, the pink one, and then the, the light blue one is for the, um, the controls. And you see that um, only the patients have this activation in the uh, uh, occipital, uh, occipital cortices. Okay, thank you. It would be super interesting to look at the white matter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be. I was thinking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's one paper that just came out looking at the occipital temporal regions uh, in more detail again. And I know someone else is heavily working on a connection that looks very much uh, aligned to what we see here in terms of the function. So that, that yeah, this is super interesting. This is what I was thinking. Uh, yeah. Mm. Sorry. No, sorry, I was asking to, to Steffi if she can share the paper. Yes, I, I'll send the link around later. Thank I'll you. find it. I was saying that this is why I was asking about the meaning of this the compensation activation. I was thinking maybe there is a connection, but I didn't know if it was like further in the imagination. <laughs> yeah. 
No, yeah, it, it's super interesting. Um, and it could make sense. I mean, if, if you think about it, maybe they develop strategy to rely more on the visual cortex uh, rather than uh, the, the, the controls. Also because they have uh, developmental amnesia, but they have 30 years old. So they are 30 years old, so they had time uh, to, mm. to compensate. Oh, super young. Mm. Right, are there any other questions, comments? Not that I can see. Uh, great, thank you very much for those two exciting papers. Um, and thanks for coming this uh, morning after the break. Lovely to see you all. I hope you have an exciting week in science and I see you next Monday. Thank you.